Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we're gonna be actually checking out these brand new processors. So as most of you know, new ones on the market, AMD and Intel, lots of cool new CPUs to check out and we're gonna be doing a comparison today. All right, let's jump right into it. So today we're gonna be checking about seven processors out. Uh, we've got four of them from AMD and three from Intel. As most of you probably know, that's the 13900K, the 13700K, and the 13600K on the Intel side. Uh, on the AMD side, we have the 7950X, the 7900X, 7700X, and all the way down to the 7600X. Before we jump right into the processors and how things are going, let's give you an overview of our test bench. Had an MSI Pro, MSI Pro, MSI Pro, MS <laughs> for AM5 motherboard, we had an MSI Pro X670P Wi-Fi. Decent board, gave us the numbers we wanted, and it's as close as we can get to matching the Intel side. On our Intel board, we had an ASUS ProArt Z690 Wi-Fi. Um, pretty decent board. Obviously, it's just here so that we can figure out how these processors perform and get some cool comparisons. But we did manage to be able to test both 13th and 12th gen on that to get a little more consistency in those numbers. Now, keeping in the aspect of making sure everything's the same, we did use the same graphics card for both, a Founders Edition 3090 Ti. Uh, nothing special there. Obviously, you guys know how that performs, so we just wanted to keep it consistent. As for cooling, we had an open loop custom system with a EK velocity block, just swapping the brackets so that we could do Intel or AMD. Um, has six uh, Corsair Maglev fans on it, always maxed out at 100% regardless of where they were at in the test. A D5 pump running water through it. For memory on both systems, we did some Kingston DDR5. It was a 2x8 kit running at 5600 megahertz, and all of this was done on Windows 10 Pro. Now that we know what our test bench is, let's jump right into it. We've got seven total processors, only six of them right here, obviously, because we're still busy with the 7600X, but on the AMD side, we have a 7600X, a 7700X, a 7900X, and a 7950X. Trying to get a good lineup of the entire thing from top to bottom so that we can give a good view. On the Intel side, we have a 13900K, a 13700K, and a 13600K. So again, covering the whole lineup. So even though we have the same core counts as last generation from AMD with the 6, 8, 12, 16 setup, they did increase base and turbo frequencies on all of their processors to get a little more out of them. Uh, as much as one gigahertz on your base clocks and on some of them even like 500 megahertz on your turbo clocks on top of that base clock increase, which is a pretty solid increase from one generation to the next. Performance wise, isn't always wrapping up to be an insane jump, but it is nice to see. On the Intel side, you're a little bit different, so it's not quite the same as last generation. It seems like they've doubled all the efficiency cores on all of these processors, but kept their regular core counts the same. So unlike last generation where things like the 12600K had six, six physical cores, four efficiency cores, and then 16 total threads, we're now jumping up a little bit and going to six physical cores, eight efficiency cores, and 20 total threads. Not a huge difference, but it is nice to see in your multi-threaded applications that you can actually get a little more out of them because of these efficiency cores. Now, in addition to all these efficiency cores, they didn't really change clock speeds all that much. So you're still getting a similar performance uh, clock speed wise, especially in single core applications, although it is a little bit faster. New generation brings that, which is nice to see. Additionally, one of the biggest differences between the two of them, AMD versus Intel, is as you can see, they obviously have some different core counts, some slightly different clock speeds, but all in all, we've noticed that a lot from AMD versus Intel, you know, especially back in the day with the four core, eight thread Intel stuff versus the eight thread AMD stuff. It's, it's nothing new to us. Biggest difference, now we're into PCIe 5.0 on the AMD side, which is kind of great to see. It gives a little more bandwidth and allows you to do that. They also add an extra four uh, PCIe lanes over the last generation. So you're now at 28 PCIe 5.0 lanes. Pretty great if you're doing some budget workstation stuff. On the Intel side, still only 20 of the PCIe 4.0 lanes. For an average gamer or someone who's just doing general day-to-day -day stuff, it's not gonna matter. You're gonna throw one graphics card in there, it's gonna run it by 16, you're gonna be happy. Additionally, to note some other little differences, AMD has moved fully into DDR5 with the new generation, which great to see, DDR5 is a lot faster, seems to be a bit nicer for most of the applications and running things more efficiently. Intel, on the other hand, still has that DDR4, DDR5 split that you can do, which is kind of cool to see, especially for someone who might be upgrading from a previous generation, such as like the 8, 9, or 10,000 series. You want to bring your DDR4 with you. You spent good money on that RAM, especially when it was super expensive. And it sucks to all of a sudden be like, I'm throwing out all my memory. All right, so it's a big thing for companies to advertise their clock speeds. They want you to know how fast their CPU is, how much it can do. But real world applications, you need to know how much they can actually do. We ran a bunch of different tests, such as Geekbench, Cinebench, 
uh, three March CPU test, as well as two games where we maxed out all the settings to try and stress the CPU out, specifically Metro Exodus and Horizon Zero Dawn. We did notice the biggest thing from each of these was power draw and temperature. This entire generation seems to be super heavy on power draw compared to last, regardless if you pick AMD or Intel. Now, for some people that may not matter, they just throw their processor in their system, throw a big beefy power supply in there and go, woohoo, whatever. But in this generation, our 13900K is pulling 240 watts under load. Pretty beefy amount for a consumer CPU. 7950X, you're looking at 229 under load. When you compare those to last generation with the 12900K being at 184 watts, you can see where those efficiency cores jump up for you. And even on AMD, even without more cores, just different optimizations causing them to jump up from the, the 5950X at 115 watts. That's pretty much double. So super big amount. Now, some notices about this. Uh, Intel, pretty similar to last year temperatures wise, we noticed across the board, very consistent with what it's under load, how hard it's working, things like that. AMD, on the other hand, did flip a switch a little bit and rather than keeping it as cool as possible, your system under our testing conditions and what we've seen so far will peg straight to the hottest it can go and try and get as much clock speed out of that. Now, if you have a beefy cooler like you would need to for either the 7950X or the 13900K, you're gonna be fine. At that point, you've got the cooling for it and it should be okay, but just something to note that if you like to keep a cooler CPU, new generation AMD might not be your stuff. Additionally, on top of all of this other power draw stuff, Intel does seem to be slightly higher across the board for all of them. It's not much, maybe about 3-4% in our tests so far that we've seen, but you know, maybe if you're really penny pinching on the, the power bill, it might matter to you. For most people, probably not. Jumping into the next test, we did a TimeSpy CPU test. Intel here, you can clearly see it dominated. Just absolutely took AMD straight to the house and didn't care. But what we did also notice is that anything with more physical cores, or in this case, efficiency cores, did seem to power through this TimeSpy CPU test. Leans super heavily into Intel with our 13900K at 22,277 points in our current testing versus the next closest AMD competitor is the 7950X at 16,748. It's a pretty big spread, which goes to show you, kind of got to look at what your application is. AMD might be better for some things, but in this case, if you're going to run TimeSpy all day long, you need, you need Intel. Um, some other notable stuff is your 7600X is tucked all the way near the bottom, worse than even most of last generation AMD stuff at 10,000 points roughly, but it is still a huge improvement over the previous generation's 8,000 score. So you're getting pretty non-marginal improvements, noticeable stuff, but still Intel takes the cake. You gotta, you gotta look into that and figure out what your specific use case is. In Geekbench, our 7950X is looking at a single core score of 2274 and a multi-core score of 23391 compared to the 13900K's 2174 and 22892 respectively. You can see there's a little bit of an edge in the 7950X across the board, but honestly not a whole lot, not enough. It could be negligible with a decent test or different temperatures or something in a room. You might see better scores from one or the other. I would call this pretty negligible in terms of score wise. Jump to Cinebench, the opposite is true. It seems like Intel edges out AMD just a little bit with whatever the competing processor is. 13900K is at 2288 on single core, but does kind of edge it out a little more than the 7950X at only 1981 in the single core scores. Multi-core scores, again, they're 400 points off at 38755 for the 900K or 38303 for the 7950X. Again, super close. For most people, you're not going to notice this kind of difference in performance in your day-to-day. -day. If you're crunching numbers all day long, then you might start to see some, some differences. Let's jump into the fun part. The part that everybody's waiting for, it's games. We, we care about FPS. Cinebench is cool. Geekbench is cool. You can run those all day long and get the highest score. Who cares if you're not running the games faster than everyone else? So for us, we decided to do Horizon Zero Dawn and Metro Exodus, both of them at ultimate settings, 1080p, trying to stress that CPU as much as possible. Again, we use a 3090 Ti in our test bench to try and get rid of any GPU bottleneck that could possibly be there and make sure the CPU is on display firsthand. So far, every AMD processor we tested on Horizon Zero Dawn, all of them beat out the 13900K. It wasn't even a competition for average, you know, we never found that the 13900K could beat the average scores of the others. But turn it around and go to your 0.1% lows, Intel wipes the floor with AMD. Our 13900K is looking at 117.2 as the average 0.1% low versus the 7950X at 116.9. And you see similar scores down the line as AMD scales down a little bit, Intel scales down a little bit, but still maintains a pretty slight lead in the 0.1% lows. 
For most people, you're going to rather have the 0.1% lows than the extra 5 FPS you get on the top end average. Switching over to Metro Exodus, uh, obviously we ran this at 1080p ultra settings. We did turn off RTX, didn't want to deal with having it mess up anything changing about the test, so we just decided to leave it off. As for who does better, Intel does edge out AMD just slightly. Not a huge difference in score numbers. It's pretty negligible for most people. You wouldn't notice a huge difference playing it actively, but you can see marginally better 0.1% scores from Intel, except for the 7950X. For some reason, AMD dropped the ball with Metro Exodus and the 7950X. It sits at the bottom of the stack between Intel and AMD processors across the board, beat out even by the 7600X. Um, and you see something kind of similar from the 7900X. I don't know if it's just something to do with the more cores. Or it's less efficiently set up for Metro Exodus, but it is preferring these lower core count CPUs. Between the two for this generation, I'm not seeing a lot of difference. Honestly, it comes down to the specific features that even each side may have. If you find that Intel with their new boards coming out has some great features that you like that AMD can't handle, by all means, pick Intel. If it's the vice versa, if you need AMD and the PCIe 5.0, if you have a lot of PCIe devices and you want a budget workstation, AMD is the way to go. Having 28 5.0 lanes on your, your top CPU, pretty solid. You can get a lot out of that. Whereas Intel, on the other hand, maybe you don't need PCIe lanes. Maybe you are a gamer who just wants to upgrade from your last gen system. Well, that's great. Maybe you can bring your DDR4 along into your DDR4 motherboards. Intel did a pretty great job of that, so that way you can kind of mix and match and you don't have to worry about it. It's not quite as fast as DDR5, but it's cheaper just to keep your memory than upgrade it. So why is this generation? We're actually pretty close, and considering how close the performance is, this may make a big difference for you. You know, at 300 bucks on the 7600X versus the 330 on the 13600K, it's going to be really close. If you find a rebate at somewhere like Micro Center or Newegg that gets you some money back, it might be worth it to pick the Intel over the AMD or vice versa. It's a lot of it may be about what your budget is. If you don't care about money, just pick whichever one you like better. Big things to note. Intel, this is the second generation in this socket setup. So we're obviously moving along in, in it and if they're more experienced. They have a lot of the quirks worked out. So you won't have to worry about as much troubleshooting in that case. But on the opposite hand, AMD has been shown to last a long while on some sockets. So brand new socket coming out, might be good to see them hold it for a while. So you might be able to pick up first gen processor in this case and carry it along with the same board and just get a new processor every couple of years. It's great to see that they're doing that, but honestly, that all depends on the person. Some people like the stability of a second generation of a socket. Some people like the first generation so that they can hold on to it for longer. Honestly, thanks for checking this out, guys. Uh, glad you liked it. If you did, please tell us if you didn't. Tell us what you liked or didn't like about it. Just comment, subscribe, all that stuff. And tell us what you're going to buy. What are you, you going to put in your new AVA Direct system when you buy it? Are you going to pick the 7950X, just ball out with red team red? Or are you going to go team blue and go with the 13900K? Are you going to budget it out, 7600X versus 13600K? We want to know. We love hearing from you guys. So thanks for watching. See you next time. If you like the PC in this video, be sure to contact our sales team at sales at avadirect.com or you can head over to our website by clicking on the link in the description below. You can choose from many pre-built options, gaming or workstation based, or use our configurator to build a PC of your dreams. Be sure to click that thumbs up button and subscribe. And don't forget to follow our social media channels at avadirect.com.